We are going deep inside near anesthesia. And the next subject is cerebral perfusion pressure. Cerebral perfusion pressure is a net pressure gradient that drives oxygen delivery to cerebral tissue. It is a difference between the mean arterial pressure and the intracranial pressure in millimeters of mercury. Maintaining appropriate cerebral perfusion pressure is critical in the management of patients with intracranial pathology, including traumatic brain injury and with hemodynamic distress, such as shock. Normal cerebral perfusion pressure lies between 60 and 80 mm of mercury, but these values can shift to the left or right depending on individual patient physiology. As cerebral perfusion pressure is calculated, a measure, mean arterial pressure and intracranial pressure must be measured simultaneously, most commonly by invasive methods. Maintaining adequate cerebral perfusion pressure in clinical situations of intracranial pathology with deranged intracranial pressure or in hemodynamically unstable conditions will decrease the risk of ischemic brain injury. Let's talk about physiology of the brain and cerebral perfusion pressure. So cerebral perfusion pressure is dependent on the intracranial pressure and mean arterial pressure, it is known and its normal range is 60 to 80. Under normal conditions, the intracranial pressure is between 5 to 10 millimeters of mercury and thus has less of an impact on cerebral perfusion pressure than mean arterial pressure for clinical situations, not involving, of course, intracranial pathology. Intracranial uh, pressure is usually directed via intracranial pressure transduction. Physiologically, intracranial pressure is a function of intracranial compliance. Intracranial compliance is a relationship between intracranial pressure and volume in the intracranial cavity, including cerebrospinal fluid, uh, brain tissue, arterial and venous blood volume that is circulating through the vessels as the skull is a fixed and rigid anatomic space intracranial pressure will increase as intracranial volume increases and intracranial compliance decreases as the intracranial pressure increases or intracranial compliance decrease cerebral perfusion pressure will decrease it's like a compartment syndrome. When there is increased pressure, there is no circulation of blood. And vice versa, if there is a decreased pressure, there is increased uh, circulation of the uh, blood and decreasing the pressure, of course. Several mechanisms ensure that intracranial pressure remains in the normal range for as long as possible. During periods of changing intracranial volume and compliance, as volume adds to the intracranial space, cerebrospinal fluid can move into the spinal subarachnoid space, leaving the intracranial pressure relatively unchanged. As volume increases, in example, a growth space occupying lesion, brain tissue edema or blood, these mechanisms become overwhelmed and intracranial pressure starts to increase sharply. Very suddenly, cerebral perf blood flow. And we have uh, a formula, formula for calculating mean arterial pressure is a one third of systolic pressure plus two thirds of diastolic pressure or we can use another another formula by adding diastolic pressure to the one third of 
pulse pressure. Pulse per pressure means difference between systolic and diastolic pressures. So, cerebral blood flow is also a critical factor in intracerebral uh, pressure homeostasis. Cerebral autoregulation ensures a steady flow of blood to the brain over a wide range of physiologic changes and disturbances. When blood pressure decreases, autoregulation causes cerebral vasodilation and an increase in cerebral blood flow and cerebral blood volume, of course, thus maintaining intracranial pressure and cerebral perfusion pressure. But when blood pressure increases, autoregulation causes cerebral vasoconstriction and a decrease in cerebral blood flow with a resulting decrease in cerebral blood volume also maintaining intracranial pressure and cerebral perfusion pressure. So too much alterations outside of normal cerebral blood flow ranges can lead to brain ischemia and injury. As intracranial pressure in normal ranges uh, is a relatively small number, the cerebral perfusion pressure is much more dependent on the mean arterial pressure. So mean arterial pressure is the average blood pressure during one cardiac cycle and can be directly measured through invasive hemodynamic monitoring or can be calculated as uh, systolic blood pressure plus two times the diastolic pressure divided by three. The normal range of mean arterial pressure is 70 to 100 mm of mercury. The mean arterial pressure is much more likely to change during day-to-day -day activities such as exercise, rest or any stress, any type of stress. However, if intracranial pressure remains constant, mean arterial pressure can change across its relatively wide range of normal without dramatically decreasing or increasing cerebral perfusion pressure. In fact, cerebral perfusion pressure and cerebral blood flow will remain relatively unchanged across a wider range of mean arterial uh, blood pressure and we uh, mean the 50 to 150 millimeters of mercury the normal due to cerebral autoregulation and vasoconstriction or vasodilation of the cerebral vasculature we have a new line that is called issue of concern so monitoring uh, cerebral perfusion pressure requires measuring both the mean arterial pressure and the intracranial pressure. The mean arterial pressure can be measured directly through invasive hemodynamic uh, means, most often cannulation of a peripheral artery such as radial or another uh, access could be femoral artery. The mean arterial pressure can also be measured indirectly with a non-invasive blood pressure cuff and applying the previously mentioned formula using the systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Also, most of the monitors uh, show you directly or calculated number of the mean arterial blood pressure, which make easy your job or your work. Intracranial pressure is usually measured invasively through an intracranial pressure transduction device. The most common and most accurate method is with an intraventricular monitor. As such, intraventricular measurement of uh, intracranial pressure is a current gold standard. An intraventricular catheter is inserted into a hole drilled into the skull and then into the lateral ventricle to directly measure the pressure of the cerebrospinal fluid. The advantage of an intracranial catheter is that cerebrospinal fluid can also be removed if needed to decrease intracranial pressure in the acute settings. These advantages include the risk of bleeding, infection and difficulty with proper placement, placement if the intracranial pressure is very high. 
Other options include intraparenchymal or and subdural monitors. Intracranial pressure can be measured by non-invasive uh, transcranial Doppler or ultrasonography TCD. TCD utilizes temporal window to measure the velocity of blood flow through the middle cerebral artery, systolic and diastolic flow velocity and mean flow velocity are used to calculate a pulsatile index. It is not recommended to use a loan as TCD alone as a substi substitute of direct intracranial pressure measurement, which is placed into the ventricle. Clinical significance uh, Two general uh, categories of pathologic derangement exist wherein management of cerebral perfusion pressure is vital. Intracranial pathology where intracranial pressure management is most important and hemodynamic instability like shock where mean arterial blood pressure management is most important. Intracranial pathology includes space occupying lesions such as tumor, epidural and subdural hematoma or acute intraparacimbal uh, hemorrhage and cerebral edema as seen after ischemic injury, traumatic brain injury or severe hepatic encephalopathy. In these cases, adequate cerebral perfusion pressure is dependent on lowering the intracranial pressure back to a reasonable normal range as quickly as possible with maintaining of adequate mean arterial pressure. While cerebral perfusion pressure has a range of normal, it is important to remember that each patient uh, brain tissue has a cerebral perfusion pressure that is normal. In, in the context of that individuals, uh, individual patients physiology which may be influenced by other medical problems such as hypertension or vascular disease, for example atherosclerosis. In cases of hemodynamic uh, instability, the intracranial pressure is relatively stable as cerebral autoregulation. And, and in the setting of hypotension due to uh, mean arterial pressure where it is decreased due to the blood flow uh, or blood loss, an example hemorrhagic shock or intravascular leak in distributive shock or decreased cardiac output in cardiogenic shock and the cerebral perfusion pressure decreases as well. Any type of decreasing uh, flow of the blood through the vessel could be uh, influence, influence uh, for the brain. In, it is the relationship between mean arterial pressure and cerebral perfusion pressure that drives resuscitation guidelines to recommend uh, maintaining a mean arterial pressure greater or equal to 65 millimeter of mercury. Assuming a, a normal intracranial pressure, this threshold should guarantee a cerebral perfusion pressure of 55 to 60, the minimum needed to prevent cerebral ischemic injury. And we have the link uh, below that that it, it represents the direct source of information that were were related. Thank you very much for your attention and have a good time.